Hey guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new, my name is Courtney. If you're returning, welcome back. All my lovely people over on Patreon, thank you all so much for your support. And of course, if you're watching with military affiliation, thank you so much for your service. All right, y'all, we got two more. We got episodes 17 and 18, and they are titled A Piece of the Action and The Immunity Syndrome. So we're gonna get into those, and I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. And yes. Let's get into it. They relate us to a man named Oxmix. His title is boss. Like a mob boss? Hello, Captain. You're from the same outfit as the Horizon? We only received her radio report last month. The Horizon left here a hundred years ago. What? That's crazy. We received a report a uh, hundred years late because it was sent by conventional radio. Ah. Well, there's an intersection just at the end of the block uh, near a yellow fire plug. He seems like he doesn't, he's not with the times. I'll have a reception committee there to meet you. Scotty, you have the con. All right, sir. Okay. Ah, McCoy, we're beaming down. Standard equipment. Okay, and we're just going to turn right back around. It will be interesting to see the results of the contamination. Well, we don't know there is contamination. What was the state of the Iocian culture before the horizon came? The beginnings of industrialization. Oh, well, this will be cool. Ah, oh, yeah, there's the yellow fire plug. This is like coming home. Home was never like this. I love the outfits. Passersby are carrying, I believe, firearms. Yeah, they are. Is it really the mob? Okay, you three. Let's see who's petrified. Oh, this is about to be so much fun. Put your hands over your head. You ain't gonna have no head to put your hands over. What's this? Now, that's a weapon. Uh, be careful of that. This is clearly very normal because people are just walking past them. Well, those firearms are not necessary. You trying to make trouble? Who? Me? Definitely not Bones. <laughs> Sir, does everyone here carry firearms? And clearly, based off of how these three are dressed, they're not from here? Oh, wow. Oh, this is so fun. <laughs> that man's dead back there. It happens, yeah. Hey, when's the boss gonna do something about the crummy street life? She got a gun, she got a gun. Listen, we pay our percentages. We're entitled to a little service for our money, huh? What are you pointing that gun at? See, they're so used to it, though. They don't care. Got him, boss. No sweat. All right, bring him in. Wow, guns everywhere. Ooh, yes, pool. All right. I like a good game of pool every now and then, even though I'm terrible at it. Which one of you guys is a captain? Depends. <laughs> Put the chopper down, Kalo. These guys are our guests. Shouldn't you have told them that before they went to go meet them? They call you the boss, Mr. Oxmix. The boss of what? Look around. Boss of my territory. <laughs> I got the biggest in the world. One thing wrong with having the biggest. There's always some punk trying to cut you out. Makes sense. You're the government here? What government? <laughs> I told you I got the territory and I run it, that's all. He's in charge. Does that include, if I may ask, a gentleman called Krakow? How do you know about Crackle? He hit us, boss. Gangsters. Chicago. Bombs. Published in 1992. That's the year I was born. That's a good year right there. The book. They left it. The other ship, the Horizon. This is the contamination, Captain. Oh. I brought you down here so you could help me, not for you to ask me questions. What is it you want? He probably got all kinds of fancy heaters up there. So here's the deal. Oh, not a deal. Enough tools so I can knock off all those punks all at once. Then I'll take over, and all you have to do is deal with me. No, nah, that's not what we do. I gotta make some hits. I want you to help me hit them, that's all. No. I'm gonna give you just eight hours to give me the things I want. If I don't have those tools by then, I'm gonna call up your ship and have them pick you up in a box. Is that understood, pal? Just say yes for now, and y'all come up with a plan. <laughs> Let's see how this thing works. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> that good, huh? Well, all you have to do is give me about a hundred of these fancy heaters and we'll have no more trouble. Out of the question. I'm sitting here trying to figure out what the heck they meant by a heater. So they're talking about the phasers. What's this thing? All right, burn them. Now hold it. It's a communication device. It's locked onto my ship's system. Take them to the warehouse and put them in a bag. Don't get me wrong, I love the dialogue because it's so like back in the day, like how they would have talked, but I would have been like, bag, what bag? What does that even mean? Hey, you, the ship up there. Scott here, who's this? <laughs> Poor Scotty. I'm gonna give you just eight hours to get me the goods I want, or I put the hit on your friends. Check the language back <laughs> and find out what a heater is. 
Oh gosh, is there about to be like some real miscommunication about to happen? I feel like it. If this society broke down as a result of the Horizon's influence, then the Federation is responsible. Good point. I do not have access to my computers, nor are these gentlemen likely to permit it. Yeah, they're not gonna let you do a thing. I can play anything you can figure out. I'm familiar with the culture on Bed and Terry's floor. Spock. I don't know of any- Spock, Spock, play along. Just, just play along. The name of the game is called, uh, Fizbin. The second card is turned up, except on Tuesday. On Tuesday? Oh. No, what you need now is either a king and a deuce, except at night. He's really believing this. You got <laughs> another jack. How wonderful for you. Now, child, I'm all over the place. <laughs> what are the odds in getting a royal fist? I've never computed them, Captain. Make it up. Oh, I'll get it. Ha! <laughs> I love it. Dr. McCoy, you better put some work in. Surely you're coming, Captain. I will, but I'm bringing Bella Ox mix with me. This mess is our responsibility. I have the orders. Let's go. Oh, I like that he's trying to fix everything. Oh! Okay, Pally, we're going for a ride. If you don't mind, I'd rather walk. <laughs> this could either be a taxi or a hearse. Yeah, we understand. Ah, poor Kirk. Pincher, do something. Thank you. You did that very well. Very simple. Amplitude modulation transmission. Shouldn't y'all have closed the door behind you? That was the jailbreakers with their latest recording. <laughs> Try it again. Notify the transporter room two to beam up these coordinates. And make it fast. <laughs> Ooh, I love that. I like classic cars. <laughs> I like the style of them. So I guess this is another mob group. So you must have gotten picked up by some good guys. Some good guy, bad guys. Cracko! Jojo Cracko! Do you mind telling me how you even know who I am? I've got all of Bella's communication bugged. Well, I guess you want to know why I brought you here. That would be nice. I want you to help me. You want... Kirk, please focus. You give me what I want, and I'll cut you in for, say, uh, a third. Skimmed right off the top. No. You, me, Bella, discuss this whole matter. The book tells us how to handle things. Yeah, I saw he had a book back there. I just think your behavior is arrested. I have been arrested my whole life. Now listen, Pally. <laughs> Tell Cyril the knife to sharpen up his blade. I just might have a job for him. Not the sharpening of the blade. I'm sorry, Cracko. No deal. Hit the guy behind you. Take him out. Put him on ice. That's like in the movie Zootopia. I don't know if you guys have ever seen it, where Mr. Big says, ice him. <laughs> If you know, you know. Okay, we may be able to use this for something. Not sure what, but let's see what he can come up with. There is no record of such a culture based on a moral inversion. You mean you're giving up? No, Doctor. Of course not. Mr. Oxmix, this is Mr. Spock. Huh? Hey, how'd you get back up there? Don't worry about it. I tell you, you better come on back down. Krakos, put the bag on your captain. Kidnapped him, you dope. Oh. I have to get the slang down, cause what? <laughs> My boys will spring Kirk, and then we'll talk about giving me a hand. Spring, that means kidnap him back. Or technically spring really means to bust him out, but you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> mean you're gonna trust him? We must have the assistance of someone indigenous. <sighs> yeah. Nice. Yep, grab the gun. Nice job. Mm. Yeah, it was a trap. We had an arrangement. A truce. I was hoping you'd think that, dummy. Wow. Nobody helps nobody but himself. Sir, you are employing a double negative. Huh? <laughs> the most cooperative man in this world is a dead man. Drop the guns. Drop them. Oh, I thought she was about to do something. <laughs> well, now that we have Bella, I'm gonna put the bag on Krakow. Get out of the clothes. Nobody's gonna put the bag on me anymore. Smart. If you can't beat him, join him in order to manipulate him. Y'all look good in those outfits. Wheels, Mr. Do you know how to drive? <laughs> Key in the ignition, turn the ignition on. And nothing happens. Where's the starter? I believe they had a device known as a 
Uh, the clutch. It, yes, this is accurate. I kind of like this. I'm going to get one myself. And put it where, sir? <laughs> You'll get it. Just keep practicing. Get the gun away from the child. You're going to hit somebody. Can I watch? Kid. You're going to hit Krakow? Out here? You open up and you'll be scrapped from every window on the street. Actually, this is a good thing that they're talking to this child. Out of the mouth of babes. Who are you calling a babe? I'm calling you a babe. I'm calling you a babe, but there's nothing personal. Sit down. Right. <laughs> What's in it for me? What do you want? A piece of the action. I figure it's got to be a thick percentage or you wouldn't be trying to hit Krakow. Logical. Very logical. What do we do? You don't know what to do. I say that! Now! And now! See, they think this is comical. That's it, let's go. Ah, I see what they're doing. What have they done to you? What have you done? Oh, we love it. He's in the action. Well, he got his piece of it. Put your face around stone. And there you go. Put down your heaters. The sound of a machine gun bolt being pulled back. I heard that sound too, but I did not know what it was. Don't do that with those. You got a cut of your deal? That's peanuts to an outfit like the uh, Federation. Unquestionably. Right. Right. There you go, Mr. Spock. Play along. And you cooperate with us, and uh, maybe we'll cut you in for a piece of the action. A minuscule, a very small piece. There you go. Uh, change your vocabulary. We're taking over. The uh, planet <laughs> is being taken over by the Federation. We help one guy take over the planet, he pulls the strings, and then we pull his. Sounds about right, really, when you think about how things are sometimes done. <laughs> yep, show him you mean business. There you go, a comfortable position. Looks good on you, Mr. Spock. All right, it's a deal. Call your ship, bring down your boys, and... Whatever else you need. So we're taking over the whole planet as soon as you get ready. He's standing about 12 feet in front of me, all ready to be our pal. There you go. Tell him. Scotty, I'd like to show him the ship, just to, to show him that we're uh, we're on the level. See, Uhura got it. She understands what's going ah. on. There you go. Come on, Scotty. <laughs> you uh, may begin, Mr. Scott. Acknowledged, Captain. <laughs> I swear, the Vulcan pinch is just so much more effective. Uh, how, how do I get here? We beamed you up, baby. It looks like we put the bag on you, doesn't it? You mind your place, mister, or you'll you'll be wearing concrete galoshes. Tell him again. Let him know. You mean cement overshoes? Um, sure, yeah. Must we? It's faster than walking, but not as safe. Mr. Spock said, I am not comfortable with this. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. No, no, no. Uh, Bella's mixed up in this somehow. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna hit his place. Where are they? Y'all, I forgot Bones was still down here. Knock it off, Sawbones. Sawbones? All right, Spocko, cover him. Spocko, I love this. Enterprise, Scott here, sir. You got crack on ice? <laughs> okay, baby, cool him until I flag you. Flag me? Reach out to you. Keep him there until I send for him. So you uh, locate the man on the other end of the blower and give him a ride to this flop. What? Scotty, dang, gone it. <laughs> Find the man at the other end of the phone and transport him to these coordinates. Get on the blower and call the other bosses. Coming over there with a couple of my boys and we... <laughs> mother. Not mother. It's okay. <laughs> Wow, he was quick with it. All right, all right, all right. He is standing on the pool table, I love it. I'm cutting the Federation in for 40%. But all I see here is you and a couple of your boys. I don't see no Federation. He's telling the truth. Kepler's got a point. Right. All we ever seen is them. I mean, I get it. I only saw three guys in that ship. Maybe there ain't no more. Oh, there's plenty. Hey, it's my boys that making a headhead display. 
Y'all really out there staring? Ah, oh, bones. Put the ship's phases on stun. Fire a burst in a one block radius around these coordinates. Nice. Told you they were packing with some power. Hey, okay, Kirk, so we get the message. Now, I was thinking, uh, fella, you would be the top boss. Crackle, you'd be his lieutenant. We'll be back every year to collect our cut. Sure. Okay, that that turned out better than I expected. <laughs> but a starship will be sent each year to collect our cut. I propose that our cut be put into the planetary treasury. I like it. All right, Bones, in the language of the planet, what's your beef? <laughs> I left my communicator. You really Rastler think it's that serious? Serious. In a few years, the Iotians made a man a piece of our action. <laughs> I love it. I loved this one. This was a lot of fun. I like that, first of all, Mr. Spock and Captain Kirk, they looked great in their mobster gangster suits. I loved it. Each outfit really complimented each of them, like the colors and stuff. They looked really good. I found this to be more on the comical side than anything. And I really enjoyed watching Captain Kirk try to drive. That was quite funny to see. Because, uh, I mean, those those types of cars, like, you know, I, the way that they were made back in the day, it's not like what we have now, especially, you know, get in the car, turn the key, put it in gear and go. <laughs> you know, it's pretty pretty self-explanatory and very simple nowadays. So it was really cool seeing that. I like how he was able to get into character to really not just understand where they were. And, you know, they figured out very quickly, obviously, that the book that was left behind. Oh, gosh. I mean, and we see this quite a lot in a, um, Star Trek. Like, I feel like I keep going back to the Squire of Gothis, but, you know, he had this idea of, not idea of what Earth was like, but a particular time period that he gravitated to and created this environment. And then you have this particular planet where they're, they're living like they're mobsters from back in the day and they're just putting hits out on people. It's just like, it, it's, it's interesting to see how people kind of gravitate towards certain things like that. But obviously, they modeled their society after the book that was left behind. So it was nice to see that they caught on to that very quickly. I really liked the fact that they were able to come to an agreement that was a little different than what we're used to seeing. It's like, yeah, we get a cut. But I understand, I understand what Mr. Spock was saying, and I understand Captain Kirk and what he was saying about yeah, okay, we're going to be taking a cut and everything, but we're actually going to put it back into the planet. I, I don't see anything wrong with that, personally. And then Bones. First of all, completely forgot Bones was still, <laughs> was still down there. Completely forgot all about him. And the fact that he left his communicator. Yeah, they're going to figure this out. But, hey, things happen. And, you know, maybe next time something like this happens they'll make sure they have all their equipment with them but yeah I did like this one in particular I thought that it was well written I thought that you know it was just really cool seeing because like I don't really watch very many shows or movies with this type of a theme it was really nice seeing Spock pinch people a bunch of times it was really cool seeing it because we've seen it before where he's he, he knows what he's doing when it comes to a radio. So him being able to still reach the Enterprise. Again, love that we get to see um, different skills that, that he has. And I just thought this was just a fun, cute little episode. <laughs> Nothing too crazy. I mean, you know, other than obviously the, the, the guns and the, and the hits and all that stuff. But you know, hey, I enjoyed it. So we're going to move on into the next one. And I hope that you guys enjoy my reaction to... The Immunity Syndrome. Approaching Starbase 6 for a much needed period of rest and recreation. Ooh, nice. I was a message from Starbase 6. It's heavy interference. All I get is Intrepid and what sounded like a sector coordinate. Intrepid is manned by Vulcans, isn't it? Oh, cool. What? What, what, what? Captain, the Intrepid. It just died. What? And the 400 Vulcans aboard. All dead. Just go down to sick bay. 
Doctor, I know what I know. Get to the sick bay. Y'all know that he's dip not different. He's a Vulcan. That's an order. Yes. Poor thing. You will divert immediately to sector 39J. There must be another starship in that sector. Negative. This is a rescue priority. Oh wow. We've lost all contact with solar system Gamma 7A. Oh, and geez. we've just lost contact with the Intrepid. Report progress. See, he was telling the truth. Gamma 7A system. But he's dead. Dead? I'm trying to make a connection with the title of the episode. The pain was momentary. It passed quickly. Well, all of my instruments seem to agree with you. I can trust these crazy Vulcan readings. You can trust them. Even I, a half Vulcan, could hear the death scream of 400 Vulcan minds. Oh, gosh. Not even a Vulcan could feel a starship die. Not even the computers on board the Intrepid knew what was killing them. You speak about the objective hardness of the Vulcan heart, yet how little room there seems to be in yours. Listen, you better speak. Clark, you may have been right. We've just lost contact with the Intrepid. Uh, maybe right. He is right. Captain, deflect her shields just snapped on. Indications of energy turbulence ahead. Unable to analyze. I've never encountered readings like this before. Now we've seen a lot of things in this view screen. <laughs> I just realized I haven't seen Mr. Sulu in the past now four episodes. You'd be able to see stars through a dust cloud. Looks like a hole in space. It's funny that they said that because I can actually see some stars through it. It lies directly in line with the course I calculate for the Intrepid and the Gamma 7A system. So should we, shouldn't we avoid it? Mr. Chekhov, prepare to launch telemetry probe into that zone. Direct computer feed to Mr. Spock. Oof. Hold on now. Wait a minute. Mr. Spock is fine though. <laughs> Oof. There's no signal from it. Okay, let's not do that again. <laughs> oh! Lieutenant? Just dizzy. I'm getting reports from every deck. Half the people on the ship just fainted. Oh gosh. Uhura almost did. She says she's all right. They say it happened suddenly like a balloon popping. I'm giving them stimulus to keep them on their feet. And Mr. Spock is the only one who wasn't affected by it. No analysis due to insufficient information. You're the science officer. You're supposed to have sufficient data all the time. Well, some things we just don't have data on yet. It is beyond our experience, and the new information is not mm -hmm. yet significant. Exactly. Is it possible that this is what killed that solar system? I would say yes. Yes. She looks real sick, and so does the guy in the corner. If we're going to attempt to probe the area of darkness to gain further information. Okay. And now he's looking weak. I, I don't trust this. Uh, uh, come on. The stars are gone. Okay, now the stars are definitely all gone. Because before I was like, I could see, I can still see some stars. Kindly tell me what happened to the stars. We don't know. Unknown, Captain. Well, have you got anything that'll help up here? I don't want anybody folding on the bridge at a critical moment. <laughs> like you're about to. We lost 5% of our energy reserves, sir. Don't ask me how it happened. I am asking how, mister. I want answers. Okay, it's times like this that Captain Kirk, I mean, I get it, but again, we see him do this quite often. He's demanding answers, like, so quickly, but people don't have them yet. Why? How? Do you have any answers? Ah, uh, poor thing. Maybe the answer is in the people that haven't been affected. We seem to be in the middle of a creeping paralysis. And you're starting to sweat. That sound was the turbulence caused by the penetration of a boundary layer, Captain. A boundary layer between what and what? Between where we were and where we are. Are you trying to be funny, Mr. Spock? No. It would never occur to me, Captain. He, he, I don't think he has the ability to be funny. Well, intentionally, with purpose. As we draw closer to the source, it grows stronger and we grow weaker. Recommendations? I have one. I recommend survival. I second that recommendation. Let's get out of here. Our orders do not say stay alive or retreat. Our mission is to investigate. But we have a good ship and the best crew in Starfleet. I agree. Even though I haven't seen all the other crews, but I agree. Sick bay to Captain Kirk. Kirk here. Go ahead, Bones. According to the life monitors, we're dying. We're all dying. Well, it's not like we haven't been here before, technically, in a way. 
Well, I was trying to recalibrate, and uh, we went into reverse. Reverse? But well, that was a forward lurch. How could that happen, a reverse thrust? I don't know, sir. Everything is unknown. <laughs> sir, we are accelerating. We're being pulled toward the center of the zone of darkness. I suggest you order Mr. Scott to give us reverse power. He just gave us reverse power. We lurched forward. I would suggest we apply forward thrust. That's doing it, sir. We're slowing down. But we're not stopping. We're still being dragged forward. Doctor, they seem to be stabilizing. I suppose that's something. Yeah, look at the positives. I love these shots of the Enterprise right here. They look really nice. Mm, no, no, no. Oh, I'm all right. It's those stimulants. They catch up with you. You sure? The analysis of the zone indicates it is a negative energy field, however illogical that may sound. But it is not the source of the power drain. Oh, wow. We'll find out what it is, but we better get out of here ourselves. Somehow, some way. Channel all the impulse and warp power into one massive thrust forward. Captain, the Intrepid would have done all these things, too, and yet they were destroyed. Their logic would not have permitted them to believe they were being killed. I mean, come on. The Enterprise looks so cool right there. <laughs> All right, Scotty. Let's get on with it. I hope this works. Ah. Are we still losing power? Aye, sir. How long will the power hold out? Two hours, sir. Well, it was a good try. What the heck? I can't even begin to tell you what that might what that looks like. Prepare to launch a probe, Mr. Chekhov. I said. Are you sure that's what we want to do? Getting very confused readings, Captain, but this is definitely the source of the energy drain. The interior consists of protoplasm. Condition living. Ah. That is what is drawing us toward it, Captain. The same way it drew the intrepid to her death. So y'all need to figure something out and act a little bit faster. Cause, um, that could be y'all next. Here's an amoeba. Yes, I remember my basic biology doctor. I remember a little bit. <laughs> I would speculate that this unknown life form is invading our galaxy like a virus. The intrepid must have come across the organism while it was still low in energy, still hungry. Ah, you'll need to eat again, yep. We've got to take a closer look at it. You've got a volunteer. I've already done the preliminary work. It's a suicide mission. Bones. I am more capable. Why don't you both just go together? Actually, that might backfire very badly. Further, you are not a science specialist. This is very true. We have precisely one hour and 35 minutes of power left. Oh, whoa. Left. They're down to the, to the wire, man. Dr. McCoy has the medical, biological knowledge. He does. Mr. Spock. Is better suited physically and emotionally to stand the stress. Yeah. Which of my friends do I condemn to death? I I can't even decide who I would send. All levels are down fifty percent now. Uh, come on, man. Prepare the shuttlecraft for launching. Sir. Just just do as you're told, Doctor McCoy will tell you what special equipment to put in it. I'm sorry, Mr. Spock. Right. Uh, I'll get a few things I need, Jim. Not you, Bones. I'm sorry, Mr. Spock. You're best qualified to go. Oh. Well, that got me. Then employ mm. one of your own superstitions. Wish me luck. I mean, Mr. Spock is the level-headed one between the two. Good luck, Spock. Aww. Scramble Enterprise. Ooh. Static. Our drain is enormous and growing worse. He won't have enough power to get back out if he diverts it to his shields. Contact in 18.3 seconds. I mean, we expected this to happen. Spock, report. <laughs> okay, good. I was going to say, maybe he's just knocked out. Oh, and Dr. McCoy, you would not have survived it. Oh, not bad. <laughs> Establishing course toward what appears to be the nucleus. It's very pretty. Calculations indicate the shields will last only 47 minutes. Do you have that kind of time? Changes indicate the organism has stored sufficient energy for a reproductive process to commence. Oh. Can there be two of those things? Not another episode with reproduction. Spock, come in. Come in. No. Contact lost, sir. Lost him completely. 
He's alive. He's kicked it on the side to let us know. Oh, smart. There are over 40 chromosomes in the nucleus that are ready to come together, ready to reproduce. We must destroy that organism. Yeah, um, I agree with destroying the organism, because look, we don't need multiples of those in the galaxy. A sufficient charge of destroying the organism. Tell Dr. McCoy, you should have wished me luck. Okay, hear me out. If Mr. Spock were to die, I know he's not gonna, but if he were to die, that last statement would eat up at Dr. McCoy for the rest of his life. It's a disease, like a virus invading the body of our galaxy. That's a good way of putting it. Antibodies. Aha. Uh -huh. Cut the engine thrust, we'd be sucked into that thing like being caught in the wind tunnel, sir. Prepare to divert power on my signal. Try to stay off your feet for a few minutes. I don't have a few minutes, Bones. Maybe none of us do. We gotta keep it moving. We gotta keep moving forward, pushing, trying to do whatever we can do. And there you have it. Ooh! Like, I know this kind of stuff is so serious, but I just love seeing people fling themselves around the bridge. <laughs> We're through, sir. Damage control parties. Report minimal damage, sir. Repairs are being initiated. Very good, Lieutenant. They are so quick with it. Mr. Spock was trying to tell us what to do when we lost voice contact. Yeah, he was. We'll use antimatter. Why? It couldn't swallow that. Antimatter comes up a lot in Star Trek. How close are you going to it? Point blank range. We must be exactly on target because we won't have a second chance. Yeah, you gotta make sure you do everything precisely the first time around. Time for another stimulant. How long do you think you can keep taking that stuff? Keep me together for another seven minutes. That's all I need. I knew Mr. Spock was okay. To the captain, officers, mm. and crew of the Enterprise, finest starship in the fleet. Ah, <sighs> wow. If we should fail in our attempt to destroy it, they receive special citation. Aww. Leonard McCoy, Lieutenant Commander Montgomery Scott, officers Chekhov, Cowell, Uhura, and my highest commendation for Commander Spock, who gave his life in the performance of his duty. I love how he just did that. Ah. Mr. Cowell, program fuse for seven minute delay. Ready for lunch. They're gonna do it. Probe lunch, sir. Mm. Mr. Cowell, back us out the way we came in. Captain, metallic substance outside the ship. Spock. Ooh, it has to be him. I'll get two tractor beams on that shuttlecraft. Do not risk the ship further on my behalf. Shut up, Spock. We're rescuing you. <laughs> Thank you, Captain McCoy. Has a bit of a ring to it. Time until explosion. 57 seconds, sir. Oh, boy. It's going to be one of those episodes where we cut it close. Power levels are dead, sir. Oh, lovely. You may have just written our epitaph, Mrs. Scott. All right, everyone, shake it off. Activate main viewing screen. Okay. Now the question is, did we snatch Mr. Spock in time? The organism is destroyed, sir. Yay. Shuttle grabbed. I don't know how, sir, but it's still with us. Good. Request permission to come aboard. Of course. Permission granted. Bring the shuttlecraft aboard, uh, Mr. Scott. Hi, sir. All things work out in the end. You see, shuttlecraft. I'm still looking forward to a nice period of rest and relaxation on some lovely planet. I'm sure you are. Let's face it, everybody and their mama knew Spock was not gonna die. Just saying. We need him. We love him. He is it just he is that character in Star Trek that we just have la completely latched on to, at least me. I mean, I've latched on to everybody, don't get me wrong. Is anybody out there, would you guys have picked Bones to go? If you would, I would love to hear your reason why. I understand the dilemma that Captain Kirk had, like which one of them do I send? And while yes, I could, I could see Dr. McCoy going out there, I could, however, I do understand why Mr. Spock was chosen the logic he can handle himself in a stressful situation i mean we've seen dr mccoy behave very 
irrationally and hot-headed and I think possibly Captain Kirk's main reasoning for not choosing McCoy could potentially be he'd be more fascinated with the science aspect of it as opposed to Mr. Spock where he's fascinated but he knows that there's a mission to carry out not saying that Bones would have been uh, I don't know I'm trying to explain it in a way that makes sense in my brain Bones probably he would have been focused but at the same time unfocused to an extent I, I feel like he would be not saying that he would intentionally do anything to put the Enterprise in jeopardy I'm not saying that at all it's just Mr. Spock he he just has that that he's way more focused in my personal opinion and him being half Vulcan really does help with that so I hope that made sense. It probably was a little all over the place, but hey, it wouldn't be one of my reaction videos <laughs> if I wasn't a little bit all over the place. I, you know, wasn't expecting it to be a single cell organism. That completely threw me off. And I want to be very clear about something. When I said, when we saw the black um, space, right, the, the outline of everything, and they said that, oh, you can't see any stars through it. What I meant when I said that I could see stars, like at the very bottom, you could see still see stars, stars through. Blah. You can still see stars through it. So when I when I said that, I was just kind of like, yeah, you can totally see it. But then later on, you know, obviously when they went through the thing, you can't see them anymore. So I hope that was you know clear. Um, I, and I know I wasn't seeing things. I'm very impressed by the amount of. Uh, I'm, I don't want to say drugs, but the, uh, okay, yeah, the amount of different things that they have in the sick bay in order to help everybody. Obviously, I know they have a crew of like 400 people. I, I understand that. But the fact that Dr. McCoy had to keep administering the stimulants to people, I mean, I'm just kind of like, I would really, for a split second, like to see y'all's um, supply of everything that y'all have, because I know that you have to have a lot of stuff on stock for these uh, types of missions and things that you guys go on just in case. But uh, yeah, this episode, I just I didn't, I didn't really know where we were going with this. I knew that we were dealing with obviously a creature that, or dealing with something. I didn't know it was a creature yet, but we were dealing with something that destroyed the Intrepid. And then of course, the Enterprise was just going through a lot. Obviously, it's the same things that the Intrepid was going through, but gosh, oh, and poor Mr. Spock in the beginning. Can you imagine feeling that, that just feeling 400 people just perish in an instant? I just, I, I mean, wow. And of course, Dr. McCoy, he did annoy me a little bit in this episode, not with him necessarily wanting to go out in the shuttlecraft. That part didn't annoy me. What annoyed me was his reaction to Spock feeling the way that he felt um, when the Intrepid was destroyed. And the reason why I'm saying that is because if we go back to the episode, and I know that this isn't in production order, I know that, but going back to the episode where Dr. McCoy had to operate on Spock's dad, He's made it very clear that he doesn't understand Vulcan anatomy that well. So if you already don't, as a doctor, understand Vulcan anatomy, how could you understand the way Vulcans are able to feel certain things when they have that connection with one another? Dr. McCoy is human. He's, he wouldn't get that. And I understand that for uh, on the human side of things, it's like there's no way you possibly, you know, experience that but you gotta re I mean I just want to tell Dr. McCoy you gotta remember that Mr. Spock is half Vulcan so he has those connections so for me I, it made sense it, right like in that instant I wasn't questioning Mr. Spock I wasn't you know making him out to be crazy or anything like that it's just, I don't know, I, mm, as long as they've been together at this point, you would think that despite all the back and forth between them, there would be, you know, a little bit more understanding, but hey, I didn't write the characters. <laughs> so 
there's that. This was actually pretty good. It got my attention. And poor Scotty. Poor Scotty was just, he was trying so hard. But again, the uh, the Enterprise is excellent. The crew is always on point. And I really enjoyed seeing that moment where Captain Kirk put into the log, you know, and, and, and just said all the things that he said about his crew. It really goes to show that, yeah, we have moments where we bicker back and forth. We have moments where we fuss, where we, we, we just don't understand each other all the time. But at the end of the day, this crew, I'm sure that Captain Kirk, he, he said it without saying it, that this is, this is a crew that I couldn't see myself commanding a starship without. That's the vibe I ended up getting from it. My beautiful YouTube family, I hope that you guys enjoyed my reaction to these two episodes. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you guys know whenever I upload another video. And I'll see you guys in whichever video you choose to watch. Bye!